We just hit 100 hours in the game. We do not care. Two minutes ago, side. It's probably when Ja got tackled through the window. Oh, that is unfortunate. Here, we'll jump out the window if need be. So let's talk about my 100 hour journey of Guts and Black Powder. Here are my stats for 100 hours in the game. Every time I played, I would sweat. So don't think this is what you have to get to achieve 100 hours. For the classes I played, about half the time, my favorite class was the Sapper because I could one shot zombies. I didn't even do anything with the building portion. But later on, I found out that the Sapper class not only gets bullied, but it doesn't one shot all the time. For example, in Endless Mode, where after wave 15, it becomes insanely useless. Unless you are there to primarily build and nothing else. And yes, it's not nice the runners are one shot, but meeting two of them is your worst nightmare as a sapper. I never once played the blunderbuss class, and to be honest, people who do play that class do not care about their words being publicly spoken, always referring to their main weapon as the blunderbussy, or that thy blunder has busted. I used the Pfeiffer class once, and the moment I realized your main purpose of breathing air is to play songs and give buffs, instant turn off. I'll let some other pinhead do that sh And also, whoever told me that you could turn off instrumental music, I thank you. Because if I listened to one more Pfeiffer song, I would have gone clinically insane. Believe it or not, the musket class is actually my favorite. Favorite class for someone else to use, since my favorite is the officer. The charge of the officer's ability is the reason I fell in love with it, because that charge could be used for more than just a clean house. When you do charge, zombies cannot grab you, and it makes it great for a quick escape. Unless you meet a f***ing runner, because they don't seem to care if you have the charge on or not. Shamblers! Oh yeah, the originals. And they should be seen as so. But they are still terrifying to go against, which makes guts and black powder an adrenaline rush of a game. They are the definition of annoying, with their personal bubble popping grabbing. I didn't even die half the time to a shambler when it grabbed me. I died to the other one that came up to me while immobilized from the first one. And runners are literally cloakers from Payday. If one happens to truck your ass, good luck getting out. Because unless you have a teammate nearby to free you from its grasp, you're gonna die. Pretty much the same as a shambler. However, the shambler has a chance to let go while a runner has you on their Christmas list. And bombers can be described as ninjas because those f***ers appear out of thin air. About 80% of my deaths have to be from bombers who took off the Harry Potter invisible cloak and blew me. The experience of public matchmaking is, um, yeah, it's something. One thing I will say right off the saber is that some people need to check up on their eyeglass prescription because holy hell are some people blind. The amount of times I've had people walk past me or just stare at me is too much to count and I could count to 25, which is uh, pretty good. But the matchmaking in general was always random. I've had so many pro matches where it felt like I was on the generation of miracles team from Kuroku no basketball. We were just constantly winning, but everyone was fighting to have the most kills. Some people would sacrifice another teammate just to get another kill. And then of course, there are those matches where people just watch you as you get grabbed and eaten, or people don't hold W on the lift on San Sebastian. But I did learn some things in public matchmaking, and to be honest, I learned the hard way. I have been vote kicked. A lot. Or talking to Gene too early on catacombs, or not using canisters on cannons, or even ringing the bell too early. Let's just say, don't piss people off in this game, because I wouldn't be surprised if one of them shows up at my house with a homemade C4. Some lobbies just get shit done, while other lobbies tend to camp more. There were some camping spots that I didn't even know about until my last couple of hours, and that was on catacombs. I had no idea the ceilings pooped out zombies back here while we did objectives. I know there are a lot of people who hate camping, and that's actually why the zombie spawns were moved on San Sebastian. So hopefully I'm not ratting out this spot, but hey, it was going to get figured out anyways. I'll mention the other strategies that were found by the Einsteins of Guts and Black Powder, and that being jumping onto the underneath part of the boat as it passes by because f waiting for it to stop, playing whack-a-mole on this map, more camping, I should say, using the fire to clear zombies on both of the endless maps, standing up here to avoid the runner horde on San Sebastian, and also the teleporting issue that Guts and Black Powder has. The zombie grabbed you on this box, turned you around, and when I let you free, it spawned you in here? Yo, you're just in there. There are probably some other ones that I don't know about, so feel free to leave those in the comment section to help our fellow soldiers. I did go ahead and set aside some tasks for me to complete while I was on the road for 100 hours, so I wouldn't get too burnt out on the game, and that was to get a 1,000 kills and zero deaths, which I almost did. I died once, unfortunately, and can you guess to what? That's right, a bomb. I tried to get a 200 KD, but I only ended up getting about 130. Old Guard was achieved very early, surprisingly, and not to sound like a class president of a graduating class, but I couldn't have done it without the help of my peers. Because f getting to wave 35 with a bunch of morons. It's a tough achievement to get considering all the pesky shit you have to do, like obtaining almost every single achievement in the game, which does involve beating objective maps in one life. And if you have a poopy squad, good luck doing that. Also having a consistent KDR, saving innocent teammates, winning a lot of objectives, and even ending the life of someone with broken legs. Which is the best part in my opinion. I'm just kidding. I'm not a psychopath. Otherwise, 
otherwise, just playing the game for this long of a time, I actually never got burnt out once. And I even wanted to hop on and play this game sometimes, which has been hard to do lately with games. And I think most of us here can relate to that. Enough of my yapping 10 university showcase. I 100% think that Guts and Black Powder will be one of my most favorite games of Roblox. And I will be going for 500 hours. Yeah, for the Discord role, but hey, it's fun. Try the game out for yourself. Links below.